Hey y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we are making a blade guard for our saw, but first let's sharpen this thing. If we're going to keep this saw sharp, we better make sure it stays sharp. So we're going to start by sharpening it. And this is one of those steps that is kind of scary to a lot of beginners. But honestly, sharpening your own saws can be really, really quick and fairly fun. Uh, it's just one of those things you got to take step by step. And once you do it a couple times, it actually goes really quickly and it's really enjoyable. It's kind of a, a meditative thing. I have several videos on sharpening saws as well as making this saw vise. And once you get a good setup and good files in place, it goes really quickly and it's it's enjoyable. It's something that I, um, I like to do. I just have to make sure I set aside the time to do it. Then once we get this set, we're going to make sure it cuts out nicely. Um, I ended up not setting the teeth on this one. They were pretty close to where they need to be. I usually set the teeth every uh, four or six times. And I'll make several long cuts really close to each other and see how close we can get them and make sure that it is controllable and that that's what I want. For the guard itself, we're going to be using this piece of maple, three-quarter inch thick. And I'm going to be making several out of this. And I'm going to cut them to three-quarter inch by one inch by however long they are. I'm going to clean up the surfaces and get them prepped because I'm not going to be able to do as much of that afterward, or it's just better to do it beforehand. I'm going to cut it to length of approximately what the saw is, and then use a marking gauge to mark in uh, one inch, or I think in this one I might put about an inch and a quarter for this larger saw. For some of the smaller ones, I left them at about an inch. Then we're going to rip it down. And yes, I'm going to use the saw that I just sharpened, because why not? <laughs> Yes, once it is ripped down to length, now we've got a rough surface in there. We're going to bring it back over and then plane it down. I like to use my low angle jack to get it rough to where it is. I find it is a good roughing plane, not quite the scrub plane, uh, but the next step in from that. Then really the big thing this needs is a groove down the middle. Now you could theoretically cut this with the saw you're going to put into it, but <laughs> that's a lot of work. Um, having a, a, a curving plane like this, or this is sometimes referred to as a rabbiting plow or a rabbiting saw. I have an old, old video making this, but it goes back a long ways. So if you want to see that, I'll, I'll try and leave a link to it down below. You just want to make sure that the kerf is wider than your saw. And in this case, it was very, very close. But for my smaller saws, this actually works out really well. I'm going to go ahead and chamfer the corners. I'm going to put a, lar a light chamfer on the, the top and a fairly heavy chamfer on the bottom. Uh, this was actually before I got the chamfer plow plane. Um, I, so yeah, I would actually rather like to use that now. We're going to drill two holes for where the ropes need to go through, and I'm just kind of eyeballing where I want these to be. I'm drilling them in the bottom half below the saw kerf. Uh, the kerf only goes halfway into the board, and these need to go a little bit below that. I'll drill from one side until I get the point coming through, and then I'll flip it over and do the other side. I'm going to be using some paracord for this. Um, old twine is the traditional method, uh, but the paracord actually works out really well for this. Just make sure you melt down the ends and uh, stick it through. Then it gets tied on. And this works great. If yours has a nib on the front, that actually works really well. Um, tying it through the handle or up and over the, the top of the bridge. But if you don't have a nib, not a problem. You really don't need one for this. Just tie it on the top and there you go. Just like that, you now have a protected saw. And it's ready to go in your toolbox and carry around. Lots of fun. <laughs> This is a beautiful distant D8 with a thumb hole. Uh, I really love this saw. It's a beautiful one, and I've been wanting to uh, have one that I can take with me to different places and make a couple different blade guards. And so something simple like this um, is a rather traditional way that if someone was taking their tools around to different locations, you could put a blade guard on it, put it in a box, and go. A lot of times, if you had a toolbox dedicated to your tools, you would actually have something to set it in to protect the teeth. But if you're going to be piling it in next to other tools, that's a great way to do it. And I really like how this came out. So yeah, simple, quick, and easy project and a lot of fun. So if you find yourself wanting to travel, there's an answer. So I hope you like that. If you have any questions, thoughts, ideas, snide remarks, then throw those down in the comments down below. Uh, thank you. <laughs> you know how it works. But honestly, with the comments, the like, share, subscribe, those help us get in front of more people, helps the channel grow, and really is a great benefit to this channel. Thank you. I also learn a lot from the comments and people post things down there. Thank you for that. I, I do read through all of them and I answer as many as I can get to. So if you want to go even farther than that and help the channel out a lot, all of these names over here, those are all patrons. They are the wonderful, benevolent, and gorgeous people who keep this channel going. Uh, because without patrons or members or people who click the little thank you down there, um, we wouldn't exist. So thank you for that. If you would like to help us keep on going and keep this channel going, keep the lights on, then think about becoming a patron or a member, and that means a lot. 
I think that'll do it for now. And until next time, have a wonderful day. The saw guard is actually the past tense version of safety glasses.